Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, and welcome to this uh, session here at the POLIS Conference 2020 uh, on mobility as a service. Yet another session on this concept that uh, promises so many benefits for citizens, travelers, uh, the sector stakeholders, operators, and society at large. But um, appears to be actually more implement to, to uh, more difficult to implement than uh, many have probably expected. So let's find out today here in this session what's uh, going on regarding Mars in, in Europe and what steps we actually need to take towards uh, sustainable development of this concept in our cities and regions. My name is Thomas Geyer. I'm with uh, EMTA, the uh, Association of European Metropolitan Transport Authorities. We are a network of the, well, 30 larger transport authorities of the larger European metropolitan areas. Um, so welcome here today. I believe we have a fantastic lineup of, uh, lineup of speakers for this uh, topic here. We have a municipal transport operator. We have a regional transport authority. We have an NGO that is dedicated to, to shared mobility solutions. And we have a large transport technology and equipment provider with us here today. So uh, together with these representatives, and to, together with you in the audience from uh, representatives from cities and regions and mobility stakeholders, uh, this actually promises to, to produce an interesting and meaningful session today. And hopefully we can uh, advance the discussion of mass a little bit further here together. A uh, quick note on, on housekeeping and uh, the setup of the session today. Um, I guess you're familiar with the, with the tool by now. Um, you can use the chat um, to, to post questions. I will actually be explicitly asking you some questions later on to, to involve you a bit in the discussion. But feel free to, to post your questions um, directly to speakers or general questions that you would like to see addressed today. And then um, Laura from Polis will actually help me filtering out these so that we can have a, a meaningful discussion. Um, we will start with uh, four presentations from our speakers. Um, after which I will be asking them uh, some small questions, uh, which will all be the same questions. Um, and that should actually help us uh, at this early stage, right after each of their um, respective presentations to find out, are we actually aligned on most things or, or uh, is there some diverse opinions here in our panel today? Um, Yes, with that, I would like to introduce our first speaker, which is uh, Juan Coro. He is a telecommunications engineer focused on digital transformation and public services. He has worked in the space and satellite industry. He was the chief of staff of the Spanish Secretary of State for Telecommunications, where he was involved in various projects and regulation initiatives for the digital society. And now he is the chief technology and innovations officer at EMT in Madrid, which is the municipal transport operator of the Spanish capital. And uh, he himself describes it as the leading surface mobility operator. He's here to tell us about the Madrid approach to multi-operator platforms. Juan, the screens are yours. Please join me. Here we are. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning, Thomas. Thank you very much. Uh, and for, for us, it's still morning. Uh, Two o'clock is still morning in Spain. Greetings from uh, from Madrid. Let me see if I can share the screen quickly. Uh, hmm. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we, we want to, to, to give a, a brief presentation on what we are on here at EMT Madrid. We are a, a public transport operator, uh, 100 owned by the, the municipality. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, our approach. We want to share what we are on here in Madrid related to mobility as a service. And this is a great day because we have just today uh, launch a new version for our mobility as a service application, which is now called Madrid Mobility 360, and it's ready uh, already in all the markets. So you can uh, download it straight away uh, to test these fantastic features we have in implemented and launched and presented today. 
what we have done now, uh, we have included uh, a multimodal planner uh, with occupancy. This is the first time uh, a multimodal planner, uh, it is developed here in Spain, no matter public or private uh, uh, company or authority. And, and we are very happy to be uh, have been able to integrate a lot of most of the uh, many of the most relevant operator here in Madrid with car sharing, motor sharing, e-scooter, bike sharing, and all the public transport. I underline buses which, because it's what we do here at EM Team. And what are the main features we we are rallying on? Uh, we, uh, let me, go a little bit back. What we have done is something which is uh, unique at this stage in planning. We have added sensors to detect the level of occupancy of every single bus we have in the network. And what we have done is to put uh, that on top of uh, the planner in, in the app. So you can, uh, when you plan uh, or you um, make uh, any trip calculation, we give you, you see here, uh, line 31, uh, which takes that 32 minutes, and it is uh, somehow crowded. It's three out of four in the capacity, that specific bus. So what we are doing there is we are recommending or giving the information of the next available bus you have with low occupancy, uh, so we can uh, uh, decimate or uh, uh, or attack the, the the peak, and and we have we can have better distribution of the network because we give the same trip a bit later, which is low occupancy, and we give you also at the same time another alternative route with low occupancy. So we give uh, a fantastic tool for all people in Madrid to have a better distribution of the network in terms of, uh, uh, of the time and also in the space. And we are delivering that information also at, at a bus stop level. So we present that information. You see those lines. We, we are currently with roughly 20 plus percent of the of the lines uh, given this real time information. Um, and uh, by January, uh, we will have the whole fleet uh, with the data uh, uh, ready. And you find in the app, in the bus stop, uh, you, you may find the information of the current bus, which, you, which is about to get to that stop. And the next one, so the, the next time you, you find a very crowded bus in front of you, you can check the app and see uh, if you, it, it works for you to wait or not. And we have also integrated payment in the in the car in the in the, in the bus. You you can buy the the single trip ticket uh, straight away from the application. And having a, a whole and a strong identity mobility identity uh, system uh, in the back end with invoices, payment, and access method, which is the base of the future uh, strategy we have. And we have also integrated the payments on on the bike sharing services, which is with Emad, which is the largest with this serene bike serene service here in Madrid. So this is been very, very uh, difficult for us. And we, we have included another one last thing, which is we are able to calculate multimodal trips, including free floating services in real time. So we can propose with that, for example, that trip, we have that calculation there with a metro and then an e-scooter uh, on the same trip or with a bike certain services, which is something quite tricky to do on a technical way. And this is what we have launched today. It's been an amazing trip and not very easy to develop such a solution. So I would like to say in the, few, in the last few minutes, what have we learned so far? But what we have learned that multimodal engines are quite difficult to pick and extremely difficult to excel. Uh, so many networks uh, and pathfinding algorithms and engines that really, really is tough. It took, it took us more than one year and I have to serve with all the audience that there were days where I really thought we were not be able to do that. Uh, but we, we got it. So my first advice will be better buy than make. Uh, I will not do it again. I, we have already finished that, but it's something I will not recommend to anyone. Second point, uh, integration is hard, slow and expensive. Get into an agreement on management level or company level, operator level, and also uh, with technical details is quite difficult and expensive. So uh, uh, what we have learned is we avoid full integration in this mobility as a service uh, solution. We really understood uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle of the desert uh, that uh, going for deep link approaches so they 
uh, in trip experience, so unlocking the car or taking the bike or motorbike, uh, it's better in their own native applications where those operators are putting all their best efforts to get a really amazing experience in the app. So we go to the deep link approach and we avoided full integration in one single app. That was our lesson learned. And the, la and the last but not least, we learned that the lack of trust and technological challenges are the biggest uh, inhibitors for mass. So uh, what we have uh, done, and we will recommend anyone there, is to, to start uh, to, at the very beginning, get to an agreement on the visions and the principle. We have issued some uh, uh, sustainable mass principles. Uh, we have signed with all the partners we have integrated, which gives us a common and a ground to have a play level field for, 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 for these new uh, steps in mass. What's our vision on the future of this uh, uh, mobility as a service, Thomas, we will, you, you are, have asked us to do is, uh, if we are about to see that all tickets, all type of tickets are, are, are going to be available by digital means to everyone across Europe, uh, we really don't see very good space for local solutions. Only, local, only global platforms or multi-local approaches will survive. Uh, and, and we see that this is going to be much faster than anyone can expect. Uh, as the digitalization is going very fast these days, uh, and uh, we, we we should then quickly agree on common modules, data formats, uh, or the standards, integration, embedded governance, and digital identities and payment. This is a must uh, a to do, a must to do. We have to focus quickly and fast. Otherwise, global platforms we for sure overtake this whole country, this whole market. Uh, and just a last but not least reflection, uh, we are talking about public transportation. And after that, we are talking about mobility, which is not only public, but private. And we are seeing here the trends of the automotive industry going for service approach for cars. We are seeing big tech players going here, another, another big players going for sustainable mobility and autonomous driving. So this is going to be a huge, a huge uh, challenge. We only see the, the first step. So uh, I don't know if you have seen uh, the, 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 the Gladiator movie. I don't know if I can share that. But it's a, 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 a scene. Uh, Thomas, can you see the, the video playing? Thomas, tell me that I'm not talking to my own. Yes, no, 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 we can, we can see it. I just had to enter the stage again to show okay. you this. It, okay. uh, it worked, I believe. This is a scene of the... Uh, have you seen this one? Have you ever been in the army? Because it's going, this is going to be tough. Uh, so from this uh, scene of the of the movie, we'd better be prepared and we better get to an agreement on public transport or or local players. Otherwise, the market will uh, overcome us. And that will be it. I will go for the last one and thank you very much for. Uh, having this opportunity. Thomas, uh, I think I was on time. You were, yes, exactly on time. Indeed, thank you so much. Uh, that makes it easy for me to actually manage uh, on this distance. And it's quite it's quite interesting, actually, if you're, if you're talking, you can't see whether anyone's actually listening to you. So that's a bit of a weird feeling. I, I reckon that as well, uh, Juan. So let me just ask you, as I introduced in the beginning, I will ask every speaker or every pairs of speakers uh, a couple of questions. Um, which we will also take on to the to the discussion later on. So, um, in your perspective, what is the most important issue that we actually need to overcome now uh, to actually reach sustainable mobility as a service? And I think you're muted. Sorry, at least I can't. Yeah, for me, trust. How we build trust on a long-term vision, and we can balance all the interests because public transport uh, authorities, private par uh, partners, and technological trends uh, are crucial for, for for this challenge to be achieved. So for me, that will be trust, and how we build that uh, is crucial for our success. Mm -hmm. And who do you think should should be in the lead of that? Who needs to create trust in this in this environment? What stakeholder? Well, well, 
what we have seen is that many other mass platforms have tried to integrate all the operators here in Madrid, and they were not able to do that because those competence uh, fears uh, and that inter uh, deadlock that sometimes come up to uh, this situation. So we found that we've been seen as public transport authority as a neutral player who can really uh, push. Uh, this mass solution to place into place here in Madrid. So we found ourselves uh, helping to to move forward this solution. All the private players have tried, but not got gotten that far. Okay. And the last question at this point: um, What do you think is the discussion of mass? Uh, as, as we've been doing that uh, a couple of conferences, it's been the topic of the last well, probably two or no, three. No, 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 no. All for this conferences as well. Well, we can discuss that uh, over a virtual beer the other day. But um, uh, how how do you think? Where, where is the discussion on masks going wrong? Are there any aspects that we're constantly discussing which are, in your opinion, actually not that important that we should be focusing on something else? Uh, for me, the 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 the, the, the tree is on the forest is the main problem. We are discussing over time on the on the specifics, on the details, on a specific points, but the whole picture sometimes is missing because there is so wide, it implies so many, all the levels of the government is in, uh, 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 is in place. All the operators uh, are, are, and all the technological platforms and services are there. So, and we have national and uh, European level regulations. So uh, for me, Grasping the big picture is something we uh, sometimes is missing, and going there and have meaningful discussions and have some outcomes that can make uh, 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 some changes in the future and really go into the impact and on an implementation phase is crucial. Okay, that would fit to your to your thought of the first question that you really need this long term vision that everything can actually play towards to. Thank you very much at this point, Juan. We'll see each other later again uh, at the uh, debate stage then for our final discussion. Um, so thank you so much to Madrid. And uh, next we will actually have a round of presentations brought to you by a team, uh, not just one speaker. And uh, it's a team from uh, Ile de France Mobilité, the transport authority for Paris and the Ile de France region, and from Cityway, uh, a provider of mass aggregate technology. Um, we have here on stage, welcome to all three of you. We have Olivier Vachet, he's the Head of Information and Digital Services at Transport Mobility. We have uh, uh, Benossine, he's in charge of the partnerships and contracts for mass projects, also at uh, Ile de France Mobility. And we have Dylan Kilev, he's a um, business developer with Cityway, um, a leading mass provider. Um, technology provider for mass aggregate technology. They are operating uh, countless uh, white label mobility solutions in, in a vast amount of cities and authorities globally. And he describes himself as a fervent believer that technologies are a key component in the promotion of sustainability in transport. So all three of you, welcome to the screen. And uh, please, let's hear what uh, what's going on in Ile de France. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. We are really uh, um, Olivier, we, we can't hear you very well. Oh, oh that's the I try with this. Yeah. Is this better? Can, can, you, can you say something? Uh, is this better like this? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. sorry. Sorry for uh, So, uh, I say that uh, Aurelien and uh, Dylan will expose you uh, our, our policy about uh, mobility as a service as a, a PTA organization or a public organization, uh, Ile de France Mobilité. And uh, we will uh, show you our, uh, is our view about uh, ecosystem uh, en masse. Uh, our vision to reach uh, what Madrid say uh, uh, about mass uh, and this hard way to go to the mass. And uh, we will let Dylan expose a, a great uh, research and development uh, project uh, that uh, will be able to bring us some 
a good part, an hard part to integrate uh, in our uh, own uh, platform uh, in, uh, in, uh, in time. So thank you, Aurélien, to, uh, to talk about our vision about PASS. Yeah, um, can you hear me well first? Yeah, okay. Perfect. So um, I'll start by showing a bit of, uh, of uh, the, the mass ambition and, and ecosystem in Ile-de-France. Um, and as Olivier mentioned, then I'll, I'll give the, the floor to, uh, to Dylan, who will be presenting uh, the M2I uh, uh, project. Uh, first, let me give you a few information. Uh, although I'm sure you 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 know about you know about this if you know uh, Paris and the Paris region, but. Um, it has a, a lot of impact on, on the way we approach uh, mass, uh, given the fact that the territory is quite large and it's uh, housing 12.3 uh, million inhabitants. Um, it's uh, it's uh, most of it, 70% of it is rural, so it, it has also an impact on the way uh, transport is organized and uh, and how uh, we we work with um, public transport operators. Um, and it's a very very dynamic uh, area. It's the number one uh, employment catchment area in Europe and it's the second largest in uh, for the major companies worldwide. Um, also prior to of course COVID-19 crisis it was the first uh, tourist destination um, worldwide uh, with uh, about 46 million visitors so a lot of, of uh, traffic and, and flows within the, the region. Um, we estimate, we, we've done a mobility survey in through, uh, 2018, um, about 43 million trips per day, uh, including all of the modes of transportation. So all of the modes that could be um, uh, concerned and, and integrated in a mass platform. Um, and regarding public transports, it's about 9.4 million trips. Um, it's important to also note that 70% of, of all of those trips are, are made um, outside of Paris. Uh, in less dense uh, areas. Um, so we we have developed a, a mass uh, ambition and, and strategy uh, because it's it's a way for us. It's a key enabler for uh, for us to uh, achieve our strategic objectives. Um, we want to be able to improve the, the services that are made to uh, to travelers um, and by providing them a seamless and per personalized uh, experience. Um, but mass is also a way uh, for us to improve uh, customer and behaviors insights. Uh, because knowledge and, and data is, is a way for us to guide the mobility policies, to, to know how, how the transport is used and how, how, how mobility is in our uh, vast territory. Um, and also one way to, uh, to, to approach this, and it, it's also important for us, and this is why we, we are speaking today with uh, CTUA, is we want to be able to promote innovation um, to serve the goal of uh, sustainable and inclusive mobility. And one way to, to serve that is to, to, uh, to have for example, research and, and development projects. Um, so it's been said by uh, by Madrid, and we I think uh, completely agree. Um, mass is is a is a, a governance uh, issue. Um, as much as, as a technical one. Um, in Ile-de-France, we have a lot of uh, actors and partners that work uh, for the in the mass ecosystem. First of all, we work with um, 80 uh, public transport operators. So it's like the big ones, SNCF, RATP, but there are many, many others, uh, bus operators, for example. So there's a lot of people to, a um, lot of companies and, and structures and operators to, uh, to integrate. Um, but we also have many, um, public uh, authorities and, and, and um, uh, cities uh, among the, the territory um, and also a lot of um, um, digital services uh, platforms and, and, uh, and services. Uh, and I forgot also as well to mention a lot of uh, new mobility operators uh, and um, usually they are private operators. So it's a, it's a governance um, very uh, important issue. And to organize this, we, we've built um, a, a reference guide uh, on, on mobility as a service. The idea is to, to map uh, all of the actors that are that can be interested in, in getting into the, the mass ecosystem and, and why we, we have this mass um, this mass uh, ambition. Um, you can find this uh, guide uh, on the uh, open data of uh, Ile de France Mobilité. Uh, so I, we can send you a link if you're interested afterwards. Um, it's it's guiding, it, it's um, listing all of the, the guidelines to uh, to integrate the mass uh, ecosystem. And um, 
<clears throat> on, on many topics such as, for example, innovation, but also uh, the important uh, part of mass, which is pricing and, and distribution of, uh, of um, tickets, for example. Um, so this is the, the the ambition in itself. The idea is to the idea is to have a, a mass platform that that we are developing, uh, like Madrid is uh, is doing right now, um, by collecting uh, all of the data all of, of all of the partners I've mentioned um, before, and there's a lot of uh, contractual uh, um, dispositions and or um, uh, different contracts. So we have conventions labeling with the uh, de France Mobilité, uh, but we have uh, agreements, for example, uh, with um, local authorities. Um, for example, we integrate um, carpooling uh, operators, uh, and we, we subsidize some some of the trips. So in return, we can ask, for example, for data or or uh, integration into our own mass platform. Uh, so we are building this this map app, which is on the left of the of the screen. Um, <clears throat> we also are building a, a, a data and service um, services platform for all of the ecosystem to come and and get data. Uh, so we act as a as a as a, a trust a trust partner, building trust, as as Madrid mentioned. Um, but we also. Uh, let, of course, because it, they, they, they are many, many initiatives, uh, private initiatives uh, on mass. We, uh, we help them operate. We, we let them operate um, by, for example, providing them with the, the quality data that they would need, um, or soon uh, maybe the, uh, the way for them to sell some tickets, ticketing. Um, uh, and then they can provide the service to, to, the, to the traveler. Um, Olivier, I don't know if you have anything else to add on this. Um, uh, you're yes. muted. Yeah. I think Sorry? we are in rush, so no, no, no problem. Go on. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Um, so this is how the 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 mass the B two C approach would look like for the uh, the the people uh, directly so integrating all of the modes of transportation so as, as madrid mentioned so uh, scooters for example the new modes uh, alternative modes of transportation uh also private bikes carpooling public transport of course um walking etc the idea is to integrate the information the ability to to purchase uh, uh, tickets to validate, of course, uh, and then they have the, the customer relationship. Um, so you can see where we are right now and how we where we work, uh, in which way we're going. Um, and today it, it was uh, the idea of uh, um, we could give an example of uh, of an integration that we are working on. Um, we have we had to move a bit faster, for example, on. Um, individual car use and, and integrates um, mobility made by cars and individual cars uh, into the, the, the approach because it's a big um, it's a big um, mode of transport in Ile de France. Um, and in order to test this, we, uh, we wanted to have a, an R&D approach. Uh, so this is the, the project we're going to speak of, um, to integrate a multimodal predicted calculator uh, and also park and ride, uh, so the, the car parks uh, services into the app. So first we test the, uh, the, the solution. We, we do some R&D with companies like CityWeb. Um, and if it works and, and when we are happy with the, the way it works and where we see uh, uh, added value for the, the, the user and the uh, general uh, public interest, we integrate this, uh, this solution into the, the mass uh, app. Um, so yeah, this is the, 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 the project <clears throat> Dylan is gonna, going to speak about. Uh, so an r &M project uh, we want to develop specifically for the, uh, the multimodal uh, planner to integrate for, for, uh, maybe the, the car. Um, and it's a way for us also, also to work with the private sector because we know that uh, it's uh, mass can only happen if we only work together. We can't uh, build a mass platform on our own, but it's important for us to be in the in the reference, the the, the building the trust on this uh, ecosystem. Um, and as 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 I mentioned, uh, when the experiment has been assessed, we are working. This is happening uh, currently on a, an integration in the the mass platform we are building. So, Dylan, if you want to um, show your screen, yes. <clears throat> so, can you can you see my screen now? Can I 
Everybody uh, yeah. see my screen? Okay, okay, great. All right, so, um, well, thank you very much, uh, Aurélien, for this introduction, and uh, Olivier. Um, thank you to police, too, giving me this uh, nice opportunity to talk about the US contribution on, uh, on this great project. Um, so, basically, if I can slide, okay, basically, so, I'm going to talk about further uh, about what exactly M2I project is, um, what is our job um, in this project, and how we uh, this project contributed to answer Ile de France mobility challenges, and how it is contributing to enhance um, the mobility experience. So, um, M2I or mobility integrated in Ile de France, or again, mobilité intégrée en Ile de France, because it sounds so much better in French, right? Um, is an R&D project, an experimentation involving a large scope of uh, 12 partners that CityWay took the lead off to design and implement a multimodal information system fitted to the Ile-de-France uh, region. 10 billion data per day are integrated uh, into the platform we built alongside um, Ile-de-France Mobility, where we are including the overall um, public and private transport offer, and also real-time and predictive information. At the occasion of this experimentation, by the way, we are um, not just aggregating the data, um, but we have also launched an app, the M2i Lab, where the purpose is to create a live testing environment for uh, travelers. Um, this is a 13 million project that has been confunded uh, by several organizations, such as um, the European Commission, uh, the ADEM, French Government Agency for the Environment, Ile de France Mobilité, of course, uh, but also many other uh, private partners involved in this project. Um, so what we can say, and as Aurélia mentioned just earlier, is that this project um, translates a strong relationship between uh, public and private sectors. Public sectors are investing in inv innovation uh, to improve citizens' environment and mobility. And we, as a company coming from the private sector, uh, we bring the technological assets to make um, that happen. So in terms of technological components, we collect, we aggregate, uh, we integrate the data, all kinds of data, um, at any kind of, of format. Um, it could be real-time predictive data into the platform to enhance and improve our internal journey planner, to create a mobility observatory, and also to create new features enriching the mobility experience. So then regarding the internal journey planner, it's all about giving users the information about the best internal combinations to influence the mobility behaviors. We are talking about model shift here. Um, many of us are talking about model shift. We want to promote model shift, but sometimes, you know, um, when you need to leave, you, you just don't have a bus stop coming at your doorstep. Then what do you do? You just um, you just don't have any other option than taking your car. You know. So the challenge is, how do we handle the model shift in these conditions? So what we do is we provide a reliable information that can allow you to take your car at the first step of your trip. Uh, that gives you the good information um, about where you can park considering the parking spaces left, and then how to follow the rest of your trip using public transport or other um, share modes. So to do so, we included predictive information related to the road traffic, um, thanks to our collaboration with Infotraffic and Peugeot PSA, um, which, uh, which is able to refine uh, the car trip solutions and to give the best um, solutions for uh, travelers. All the data we collect and gathering um, and that we aggregate aims to enrich uh, the mobility of the battery. We created a tool allowing uh, Ile de France Mobilité, um, enriching its database with the data collected and uh, giving it support to make the best decisions. You know, having a plan, um, having a mobility policy, having a strategy cannot be improvised. Um, you need, you know, the right figures, the right data, and we are in charge in that project of collecting the right data, the right figures, and through this mass advisor, 
uh, we provide dashboards and analytical tools to help Ile de France Mobility refining its, um, its strategy. So in, in the M2I project, uh, not only we provide a journey planner and a mobility observatory, but we're also testing innovative features. So the first one, the crowdsourcing module, um, aims to enhance users' experience and also their involvement in the mobility ecosystem. Each uh, one of us has um, actually a, a role to play. Um, with this feature, you can make some kinds of reports, um, such as uh, giving an evaluation of the occupancy rate in the vehicle, which is pretty useful in, in a COVID-19 context. Um, you can report the vehicle um, if the vehicle um, uh, came or if you had a delay. You can uh, also report the bus stop, um, whether it is misplaced or a damaged uh, equipment, for example. We also implemented a personal mobility assistance for our citizens. So the question is, where is the best place uh, I should live in? Um, where could be a good place considering my work, the children's school or uh, my wife's uh, fitness club, for example? Um, we have also integrated travel navigator uh, for uh, travelers. If you are a tourist uh, visiting Paris or just passing by for the first time, where do you want to go? Uh, what do you want to uh, what do you want to do? You, you, you can just set the time you have left, um, your main interests, and then the app makes uh, makes you a complete plan to visit museums, to advise you restaurants or a park to stay with a pretty fine trip generated uh, by the algorithm. So this is how we can enrich um, the, the, the experience. And then we added a real innovative approach uh, to better target the drivers and encourage the model shift that I was talking about earlier. Um, the application can be interfaced with a car's GPS for an internal and seamless travel. It's really simple. Let's imagine you go out from home uh, with your travel app, uh, you get into your car and the app is, is automatically synced with the GPS. You, 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 um, you park where, wherever the, the, the app tells you to go, uh, you are guided. And then when you go out from your car, you just have to follow the rest of the trip uh, with your smartphone in public transport or whatever of the share mode. All right, so just um, before I end this presentation, uh, let me share you some words about our company, CityWay. Uh, we provide mobility digital, digital solutions uh, for local authorities and operators in white label um, for about 20 years. We are 200 tech engineers and mobility experts based in Aix-en-Provence. Then if you have any questions, um, feel entirely free to uh, reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dylan. Can, can you hear me? Just to be sure that I'm not talking to myself. Very good. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much, Dylan uh, uh, Thank you. and, and uh, Olivier. Um, I will also pose the question to you. So maybe if you can just briefly decide who will answer which question. So in your perspective, maybe Dylan, maybe that first one would be for you. Uh, in your perspective, what, what is the most important issue that needs to be overcome to actually create sustainable mass solutions? Right. Um, there are, you know, probably uh, many topics <laughs> that can be discussed. Um, you know, we, we, we can talk about how uh, to find, you know, the right business model to make it sustainable. Um, for, for instance, yeah, we, we City Way, we can provide the mass platform. We have already integrated more than 400 uh, mobility service partners, all projects uh, combined. The, the issue, uh, I, I would say, is not the technology. Um, I would say the real challenge um, is to convince partners, mobility partners, to collaborate, um, to share their data, um, the travel information, the fares, because if we don't have this data and um, and this willing of uh, sharing and collaborating, we, we cannot um, make a, a mass working. Okay, and, and who would you see as the, the main uh, stakeholder that would need to uh, kind of zoom into these business models who should be developing business models in a way that they are sustainable? Is that a, a private sector or a public sector task? Um, that's, a, that's a good one. Uh, we, 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 need a, we need to have, I think, a, a, level, of, um, a level playing field in, a, in that context. Not an actor more powerful than another. Everybody has to play equally. Um, you know, today th there are laws coming up in France, in Europe, um, in France with the low law. Um, 
that aims to uh, to make the playground equal um, in terms of data sharing, for instance, so, because I was talking about that. Uh, this is probably one topic that could resolve uh, the, 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 that point, the, the laws and the, the, the rigid, juridical uh, aspects. Okay, so really going into the legislative direction. So Aurelien, if I may turn to you now for the, the other question, uh, considering the mass discussion, I mean, you, you're managing relationships and, and contracts for mass developments in Ile de France. So what, what do you think? Where is the discussion going wrong? Where are we being hijacked by certain topics? that are actually not of importance and what should we be discussing otherwise? Um, first of all, I'd like to, to say that we are, uh, the, the law, the French law that has passed um, has given the, the public transport authorities, um, um, of course, a level playing field, but also we are, um, Ile de France Mobilité is, is right to be in, to, to want to be in the center and to, uh, to be um, able to provide data to the services that, that need it. But um, the, the biggest challenge we have right now is uh, integrating all of the partners that uh, we want to integrate. Uh, and they have many, many different um, visions on how the data needs to be shared or etc. Uh, so um, we have to have um, contracts that suits uh, and partnerships that suits uh, the, the relationship we have with those private operators or public ones. So we have um, many of them. The law is kind of... Uh, on, on our side, we are on the side, of course, of the law because we have to uh, to respect it. But <laughs> it's important for us to um, to be uh, at the center of the of this mass uh, ecosystem because we're the the, the good actor to to uh, integrate all of the those other ones. Okay, thank you very much. I've noticed a couple of things for later on, so um, thank you for this, um, and we'll see you back uh, in a couple of minutes for the uh, debate all together. Uh, so thank you to to. Paris and I believe Aix-en-Provence, <laughs> where you guys are calling in from. Um, so next up, we have uh, we have Taxi Stop, uh, a non-profit uh, organization advocating for and developing shared mobility solutions. And from Taxi Stop today, we have uh, Thierry Le Khoum. Uh, there he is already. Welcome to the, to the screen <laughs> in this case. Um, so Thierry is a systems analyst with Taxi Stop, and he's uh, specializing in interoperability for shared mobility modes. Uh, he's worked on a variety of European projects and uh, gained experience there in really developing and introducing several of these concepts in, in various European cities. And he's currently involved in the eHubs project, uh, where he's really working on this digital integration of services that will be, uh, well, physically integrated at these uh, eHub mobility locations in, in a variety of cities in, in Northwest Europe. So, Tjale, please tell us all about data and standardization for interoperability. Hello, thank you for your uh, introduction. I will just quickly share my screen. Uh, share audio. Hopefully this works. Yes, yes. we can actually see ourselves being mirrored in there <laughs> into a deep void. Oh. <laughs> there we are. This should be better. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for your introduction and for leading this, um, yeah, this session. Um, and also thank you to Polis for uh, allowing me to speak and to, uh, to talk, of course. Um, my name is uh, Charlie Groen. I'm um, mostly into operability when it comes to mobility. Um, I would like to talk to you about, the, about two things. Um, the eHubs project, I was involved with that and um, the TOMP API as a standard for uh, mass integration. Um, first off, um, so I work for TaxiStop. TaxiStop is a Belgian uh, nonprofit organization active since 1975. And we, our goal is to enable more efficient use of resources linked to mobility. Um, nicely said, we create real solutions for people and increase the political and public awareness. That's how we realize the social and ecological impact, uh, and we prefer to do this through cooperation. And in this environment, we uh, we are involved in the EHUBS project. Um, the EHUBS project has a few sites. It has a it has a physical site, mainly the bricks where you and this is might be you've probably heard it throughout the uh, conference and different talks already, but. Let me just explain what an EHUB is. So an EHUB is a, a landmark set in the public domain 
where information is provided about different uh, mobility modes. Uh, and also there is a connection or uh, a clear direction with uh, electric mobility, like shared cars, shared, um, shared bikes, but also public transport. Um, they connect at a certain point. At this point, a landmark is placed that can, can be completely, uh, like here on the right, completely uh, analog, with just some stickers telling them what, what is around, or can be more digital with a, um, with a column like this, where there's an integrated touchscreen, which runs a certain application. And this is the digital side. You will see some, uh, you can see some screenshots here about this digital side. So I'm gonna take a sip. The idea of these digital e-hubs are to inform the users about real-time travel options, uh, but also to cater to people who don't have a smartphone. Uh, a lot of tech solutions, focus on the fact that all everybody has a smartphone has access to internet, but it isn't always the case. So it's important to be part of it, to have to cater to people without it and to raise awareness for multi multimodal solutions. Uh, an eHub has no booking or route planning involved. So it's although it's a player in the mass field, it is not a mass provider as such and does not aim to be that. Um, this is a quick overview of how the environment is set up. There is a central database which connects to our websites, to these, um, these columns, also to a dashboard specifically for the cities. So if you place uh, an eHub on your, uh, in your city or in your municipality, it doesn't need to be a city, it can also be a smaller community. Um, you get access to a dashboard where you can control what is shown on this, uh, on this kiosk. You will, so you have your own control as a city to manage what is going on. Um, and also the whole connection part, which is the data part, which is, uh, of course, very important, um, connects to this database as well, uh, being from NMBS, as in, uh, it's, a, it's the Belgian railways, uh, car sharing providers like Combio, um, but also buses with the lane and everything that comes from the TOMP API, um, which I, I will explain a little bit later. I want to show you a little demo. I hope this works. I will stop talking and let my previous self do the talking. Oh. You had an overview. Yeah, you already see what time it is, what date it is, and some buttons linked to transport options. This particular e-hub is a real e-hub. It's located at the station of Heverly. It's uh, in the outskirts of Leuven. So it's not that busy mobility-wise, but it connects a lot of uh, different options. Uh, first off, on this dashboard, you, the municipalities have the option to show information like this, uh, in particular, is about the EOPS project in, within the city of Leuven with a text on what is happening and map with, uh, with the different points where EOPS are being located. Users can provide feedback. Um, you can get some more information about the EHUB itself. And then we come to the transport solutions. Let's start with the train. There is a station very close to this EHUB with only one line. So you can go from to Ottigny either or to Leuven. And here in this interface, you will see, ah, in 11 minutes, I can take the train to Ottigny. And in 14 minutes, I can go to Leuven. When there are delays, they're shown here. But at the moment, everything is running smoothly, luckily. Bus information is provided as well. You will see on five minutes at platform one, I can take the 337 bus to Wavig, or I wait a minute more and I go to the campus in Heverly with bus two, departing also from uh, platform one. Delays are also shown. So this is, both these connections are real-time information provided by the transport operator themselves. Car sharing is also available. For example, this electric car, the, uh, the Renault Zoe, which is located at this address has these specifications. And if you want to book it, you'd simply scan this QR code. Bicycles are available. E-scooters are available. We have for this demo, I have used the Tomb API to connect uh, our carpooling services. So if you click on this, we have um, packaged it in the right way so that we can show it to you. And by doing that, you can see from this point, these are all drivers that are passing by the EOP. So you can get back, picked up at that point at a certain time. 
For example, uh, if we take the first one, it's Naomi. She is um, leaving later this afternoon because this is a pre-recorded session, of course. You can even go to the Netherlands from here or to the airport, but let's click on this one. You tap it, you get some extra information, what the price is, where she's going, when she's going to pick you up. And you have a QR code, which you can use to directly book your ride. For the ease of things, I've added a link here and you can see what happens. You directly go to the carpooling website where you can click right along and you can drive together. To start, you simply touch the screen. Uh, Tiana, you would need to unmute yourself. <laughs> We've muted you from a distance because there was an echo uh, in the in the replay of the video. Sorry about that. Sorry for that. Um, I wasn't aware. <laughs> I should have tested that more. No problem. <laughs> I hope you were able to follow the video. Yes. Um, so the so this was a demo of the kiosk application. Uh, this is uh, being installed all over um, all over Belgium at this point, but also uh, the mob the e hubs are installed in different cities across Europe, uh, from uh, Arnhem, Nijmegen, where this Polish conference is being held, um, to Manchester, uh, to Dreux, to Leuven in Belgium, um, different cities to. Um, Campton in Germany, so it's been spread around. Um, to make this possible, this integration, for example, the carpooling I showed, we used the TOMP API. Um, and to I would like to start with the struggle of filling in data. So if you have, uh, as been shown in the previous presentations as well, when there is a lot of data from a lot of different transport operators, it becomes very difficult to integrate that in your system. It's almost like a puzzle, doing a puzzle upside down where you have to work real hard to find uh, the perfect fit. And if you force it, you will just break what is going on and that's not what you want. So the, that's why within the EOPS project, one of the goals was to create a, uh, an API, an application programming interface uh, for the communication between transport operators and uh, mass providers. At the same point, the EOPS project started, there was also an in initiative in the mm -hmm. Netherlands for creating such an API. So instead of reinventing the wheel and doing it ourselves, we joined forces and we worked together uh, and we joined the TOMP working group to create the TOMP API as one of the partners involved there. And with that, we were able to go from this puzzle pieces, which you can't do anything about, to something assembling Lego, where you it doesn't matter if it's Duplo or small or big Lego pieces. When you start to build, you can build something really fast. Uh, this is a quick overview of what the TOMP API um, entails. Um, it goes from uh, operator information. I have to be quick, so I will uh, only have 10 minutes, so I won't take that long. Uh, it goes from operator, operator information, telling information about who is, who is offering the information, who is reading the information, um, what is available, the resources, the stations, everything is involved in this. There's a planning uh, pillar which goes about planning the uh, right in forehand or to look for possibilities. Booking handles everything involved in booking. Obviously, trip execution is the whole part where you leave. So it's opening the vehicle or the asset to uh, pausing it to having issues on, on along the way, um, things like that. Payment is, of course, a big part of it as an important part. I'll come back to that later and support is also integrated into this. And this communication goes between transport operators and mass providers in both directions, with each having their own layer of authentication, because that's also very important. For the eHubs um, demo I showed before, we only use um, a small part of that. So it's essentially, we, we have created, or we are creating a sub API of the Tomb API, where you hold the, the whole ecosystem ready, but you only create a small part of that which is required for that. So this can be like a step towards integrating to Tom. When you want to integrate in an in e-hub, you have to present a certain part. 
once you have when, once you are getting to know with the system and know how everything is going you can promote to the full uh, tomb api that's one of the ways to get involved or if you're already part of the full tomb ecosystem you can open up a little part and we only use what is needed so that's a very flexible way to work with um i just want to give some notes so why do we need standardization um I've made some a little a few points. So for the mass ecosystem, it's about creating a level playing field. That would that came across uh, earlier as well. Um, with clear guidelines, you can create uh, equal opportunity because, in my opinion, it's really important that local players are also able to connect into the ecosystem and not just the the big players, because the, there is a lot of technology uh, development involved in getting that. And if you have clear guidelines, and if you only have to do it once. You will save a lot of time and uh, yeah less development means uh less more time on all sides um we also want to say that we need uh, more uh and you can also have more interoperability and multimodal solutions for municipality specific since it's uh, the polis conference by simplifying the tendering process um you will stay comply and you can simplify the tendering process if you just say you need to com be compliant to one standard um, within TOMP, there's a CDS mobility, or it's almost an, an equal to MDS. It's a different approach to it to create a feedback loop, loop on mobility within their ter territory. And you can offer a broader, broader range of options to inhabitants. The more people use this standard, the easier it is to integrate with something, the more things you can offer. Why the TOMP API? Um, I'm just going to go over this real quick. Um, the TOMP API was created with a very open work group. So there is, it's a group that came together giving almost voluntary input, but they come from all players all across the field. It goes from transport operators to mass providers to, to bike sharing operators to uh, us with TaxiStop, the EAPS project, all different sites. And there is a very uh, large will to move forward and to keep going. And these members were from different countries. And it's a, it's an actual realization of product. So at this point, it's being implemented, it's being used. There's feedback coming in about the, the API and this feedback is being um, taken into account. And therefore um, the 1.1 version of the Dragonfly version is, uh, is being released this week. And this has um, incorporated feedback that came from implementers across uh, not only in the Netherlands, but also across uh, in Switzerland, if I'm all right. Um, so if you want to join, get in touch. It's a very open uh, working group. Standardization hopefully equals something like this, where you can use these Lego pieces to build uh, a connected ecosystem where it doesn't matter what you are, you can be big or small, you can connect to the same uh, main hub and get your piece of what you want. Uh, I want to end with uh, thanking the people who took the photos and, of course, some links um, below this stomp-workinggroup.org where you will find be directed to the different sites and it's always, the, the wiki is very nice to uh, have a look at. Thank you for okay. listening and watching. Thank you very much, Tjale. So also for you in uh, looking at the time a little bit and, and so that we can have a, a proper discussion at the end, I will actually limit the, the questions I'm going to be asking you to just the last one, which is really okay. where do you think the, the, the discussion on this whole thing is, is going wrong at the moment? Where, what are things that we're discussing which we do not need to discuss at all or not at this point and what are we actually missing out on? Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. The first questions were in line with my presentation, anyway. So it's uh, Indeed, yes. that takes a third question. Um, yeah, there is a lot of discussion. Some of them are very useful, not not all, of course. Um, but the main thing I would like to point out that's uh, that's a bit separate from my my talk before is that um, that Mars should not be a purely technical or economical ecosystem, because. It, it also promises opportunities to open up the street. It's not giving, it's important to give like smaller uh, mobility providers a chance to connect and be part of that and to keep that in mind when you go forward. Um, so they can thrive next to the bigger players in the field, but also to create a, a more sustainable mobility environment by educating uh, people and giving them the freedom to experiment. 
I, for example, I live in Berlin, and I'm when I walk around here, I'm always yeah, amazed or appalled by the amount of space is, that is taken in by parked cars. There are quite broad broadways with trees and stuff more than in other cities, but as a rule, on any given street, the amount of space used by the parked cars, like on two sides of the road, is more than what the pedestrians and the, the bike lanes have uh, on most streets. And this leads to dangerous uh, situations, and it's not, not just, it's just not good use of public space. So I would like to see the discussion going towards rectifying the situation, and if Moss can play a small part or a big part in this, I will, will, will be happy. So uh, actually, I'm sensing in here again, not to talk about the technology or the business case too much, but actually looking at what goals it would need to achieve in that sense. So thank you very much for that input, and uh, we'll see you back in just a little bit as well on, Thank you. Uh, on this uh, screen. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, next up, our final speaker um, to, to round up this block of, uh, of presentations is uh, Andy Taylor. Can you hear us, Andy? Because I'm I can hear you loud and clear, yes. Yeah, perfect. Um, so he's uh, a global transportation expert. You've probably seen him at many conferences as well uh, with a diverse experience and, and background uh, reaching from air traffic control to multimodality and uh, he's, he's the head of global strategy for Cubic, a uh, large transport technology and software provider. And uh, he's been in, in the role spearheading the mobility as a service solution for quite some time now. And uh, he's actually twisted a bit, or he's t uh, currently more focusing on ac uh, educating transit agencies and communities to actually reach the true benefits and impacts of, of mass, uh, to understand that and to be able to take ownership. So, Andy. Please. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, so it's a bit of a sort of provocative title more than anything else. I think we've had a lot of discussions about mobility as a service and what will make mass work and what uh, and the, the need to sort of take it away from technology and also look at the, the sort of policy and the outreach and how we actually connect with people to deliver mobility as a service solutions. But I think one of the key reasons that we haven't seen a big uh, uptake in mass at the moment is Firstly, it's been heavily pushed by the private sector um, and the public sector are always sort of slower to respond because they're very risk averse and cash poor. Whereas um, as, as we sort of see mobility as a service now sort of being taken on board because public agencies are being forced to examine their sort of mobile solutions, uh, they're, they're the way that they deliver mobility. Sorry. Um, secondly, it, when you start talking about mobility as a service, um, it's very hard to sort of get away from the fact that you are now putting your mobility options in the hands of a, an app or a service provider. Um, and one of the things that you tend to sort of realize that, that I've realized through sort of my own use of different mass sessions, uh, mass applications, sorry, is the reliance on the, the sort of arrival times and the trust that you have in the service that's being provided. And you can only sort of really um, start to believe in the information that's being provided to you and trust that the journey that you're booking is going to be executed and you're going to get to your destination on time if the information given to you is accurate. Um, and th this comes down to how you do better planning within the uh, application, how you provide that sort of level of connectivity and how you can actually sort of bring these sort of different solutions together uh, accurately. So I want to start with a little case study that happened back, uh, it was 2050. Uh, this is the Sydney Harbour Bridge, uh, and there's a bus caught fire uh, partway across the bridge, uh, which closed down the roadway. Uh, unfortunately, the trains also used the, the bridge as well, so that stopped all of the trains. And where the fire actually occurred, uh, debris was falling onto the ferry terminal below. So it's that, that shut down the ferry network. Uh, so all of a sudden, you lost uh, a great part of the public transportation network, you lost a great part of the road network, uh, and unfortunately because of the silos that exist between transportation management and uh, network management and sort of public transportation, uh, that lack of communication led to an issue where people were stranded, uh, people couldn't get around the city, the, the loss in revenue from business and commercial must have been horrendous, and it took about 36 hours for the for the city to actually get back to normal to get its uh, to everything to get back into the right place for people to get home um, before things were normalized 
Now that sort of level of disconnection between traffic management and mobility as a service uh, has sort of led to um, a working group being set up by TM 2.0 uh, and the Mass Alliance as part of, uh, the, who are both part of Vertigo. Uh, and the, really, the reason being that we really need to sort of focus on the multimodal transportation systems and how we can start combining data and information to sort of help traffic management understand what the demand is going to be, but also at the same time using data from traffic management to sort of help improve mobility as a service uh, planning and operations. When you look at the sort of possible operations that can exist from a mobility as a service side, uh, if I want to sort of uh, plan a journey, I want to know about sort of the, the travel and route information. I want to sort of know about network optimization. I want to know what the traffic is going to be like so I can sort of plan accordingly. I want to know if there's an event uh, that's going on that's going to sort of cause a disruption. From a traffic management perspective, when I'm executing the journey, I'd like to know which roads I'm on. Uh, what the demand on that public transportation network is. Uh, is there going to be a flow of people using this specific sort of bus route? And so is this bus critical to sort of make sure that it gets through the traffic as seamlessly as possible? Uh, and we want to be able to use this information in a bi-directional manner to really help optimize both traffic management and mobility as a service. So the task force was created um, about a year ago now. We had a workshop in February this year. Uh, with the, the focus of the outputs being on that task force being what mass functions can support uh, traffic management 2.0 and vice versa, what, what TM functions can support mobility as a service. And we wanted to look at the, the sort of functional aspects, the technical aspects, the organizational issues, which are going to be through now sharing data between different organizations and looking at some of the service models and how they can be sort of provided as well. Um, and as part of this, we also needed to consider the business models. The it, sharing data between these different organizations is always going to be sort of a, a hard conversation. So what, what's the business model for mobility as a service providers? And what's the business model for sort of the traffic management side? And what levels of policy and regulation need to be sort of uh, changed to sort of enable this to happen? The goal was to sort of look towards a multimodal mobility management sort of system or ecosystem. Uh, we wanted a, a sort of solution that can basically respond to increases in travel demand. Uh, and I think if we look at post COVID uh, now, it's a case of we've seen a, a big shift away from public transportation and back to private car utilization on the road. So how can we look at that demand and how can we better try and nudge people's behaviors or nudge people's route options uh, in the traffic management and in the mobility as a service type solution to better balance out the load on the public, on, on the sort of the holistic transportation network that is, exists within a city or region. Uh, and this is a sort of step forward from uh, the, the TM, the traffic management type systems by now embracing different modes of transportation and bringing that into the ecosystem. So start looking at what public transportation is doing to the road network as well. It allows you to do optimization across a whole region of both public transportation and private car utilization. Uh, and it's a way of sort of um, looking at this from a, a bigger picture perspective. Can we optimize on a macro scale for the, the city uh, and optimize on a micro scale for the individual user or driver in one of their vehicles? So there's a lot of stakeholders at play when you start to look at issues of sharing data. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all here. The, the, the slides will be available afterwards. But these are, this is a representation of the people that we did have uh, at our workshop back in February, which is a full day workshop where we, we presented a whole sort of uh, set of scenarios and we posed a whole uh, group of questions. Um, uh, and it was a sort of very active and engaged discussion. And there is a report that I'll, uh, the, the link will be available later on. Um, some, of the, some of the key sort of focus areas of that workshop is looking at sort of data exchange uh, and trying to uh, understand exactly what levels of data needed to be sort of shared. Looking at the sort of collaboration models between the city, between traffic management, between the mass provider and the user uh, with the goal of trying to be, create a win-win-win scenario where everybody's getting a potential benefit uh, from sort of this data sharing. Uh, it's trying to understand the, the issues to do with trade-offs as well. I mean, providing this level of data is great, but it's making sure that the data you're being provided is going to be sort of fit for purpose, is going to actually deliver some sort of tangible benefit to the users at the end of the day. Uh, and it's also more importantly as well, looking at the aspects of policy 
uh, and delivering equity between the different modes of transport. Uh, can we put in place the policies and mechanisms to make sure that we are uh, we're not sort of favouring one mode of uh, transport over another, and can we actually demonstrate that equity? Uh, we also discussed the areas of common and open data sharing frameworks. Uh, data ownership was uh, a big issue as well that was discussed, uh, along with the concept of the single authoritative source of data through the life cycle of a data. <clears throat> if you take, for example, the uh, a bus schedule, a uh, bus schedule is printed like months in advance, <clears throat> and it's very accurate right up to the point where the bus leaves the depot in the morning, at which point it's relatively yeah, historical. You're now relying on the actual positional information of the bus and looking at when that bus is actually going to arrive at a specific bus stop. So data ownership and the sort of data life cycle were sort of key uh, factors we wanted to look at. And also sort of the monetization strategies uh, for people to actually sort of get engaged in this. What's the potential benefit? So from a mass operator, what's the sort of monetization benefit of getting better and informational services that they can then use to give you better journey planning solutions from a uh, a traffic management perspective, what's the, the best route and, uh, and notifications that you can give to individual drivers. From a city perspective, what's the, what's the monetization strategy for being able to reduce the environmental emissions uh, by not having sort of traffic snarling up a whole region. So uh, part of the report's conclusions, and the link is there at the bottom of the slide, um, is that the, we are now re evolving from what we're calling traffic management to looking at holistic transportation management. Um, and this transportation management needs to be completely multi-mode. We need to look at all modes holistically. Um, we've also looked at sort of how we're going to develop some key performance indicators to sort of take into consideration the whole ecosystem. So what is, what is a good KPI for increased or beneficial traffic management? What's a good KPI for better delivered sort of mobility as a service solutions? Uh, we want to sort of make sure as well that this is not just about looking at the, the traffic that is in and around the city and how we make mass work for that. It's about how we actually optimize for private mobility operators as well. So it's the, the, the new service providers that are actually within a given region. How can we actually optimize for them? Uh, we're going to look at how we can sort of bring together urban planning into this as well. How can we make this a win-win-win scenario for the actual city or the region for the public sector? Uh, and also looking at um, security and privacy considerations as well. Obviously, there's data passing backwards and forwards. Uh, how do we maintain sort of uh, personally identifiable information? How do we comply with GDPR type regulations? Um, and the report was quite extensive. I think it's about 88 pages long. Um, it's a good read. I have to say that because I was one of the authors. Um, but it, it's not over yet. There are a number of sort of next steps and recommendations that we're looking at. We are going to continue uh, the research work of the TM 2.0 and the Mass Alliance, uh, taking into account uh, a bigger role into account of what the role of local government, uh, national government are in sort of driving this sort of interoperability of data between service providers. Uh, we also want to look at the user's behaviors. We're talking about nudging people's behaviors and getting them to change modes or change routes. Um, how is that possible? What, what are the key motivators for people to be able to sort of shift their uh, their behavior patterns? Uh, and that's going to be a close one that we have to sort of work with. Uh, obviously, there's a realization through the report that the, there are in, inextricable links between the Mass Alliance and the T, uh, TM 2.0 team, uh, multimodal transport management. And those are becoming more critical in delivering better quality data to allow better journey planning for mass operators. So we're going to continue with the task force now. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, bringing in a raft of other sort of uh, stakeholders as well to make sure that their views are, are heard in that. And then hopefully, um, just to sum up, we, we are hoping now that, that this sort of focus on bringing in better data to help improve mass operations is really going to help promote that sort of mass uh, adoption a little bit quicker now. Like I said at the top, um, Mass for like the last five years has been driven by private mobility service providers and mass operators. Um, and that's what I've sort of called what I call mass 1.0. I think we're seeing a pivot now to sort of mass 2.0, which is now being driven by cities and regions that realize that embracing private mobility culture will be a way of delivering better holistic mobility solutions for a region. Uh, but they have to do it in an equitable manner. Uh, and what, they have to do it in a manner that basically is equitable for the private car users, but also for the mass operators. So having that sort of connection connection between trans, uh, traffic management or transport management, as we now refer to it, and mobility as a service will help drive better solutions being planned in the future. 
Uh, and with that, I'll hand back to uh, Thomas. So, thank you very much, Andy. I'm sorry, I just lost my connection real quick when I tried re-entering the stage. Uh, can no. can you hear me? Yeah, is it working? I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Uh, so, thank you very much for this uh, for this insight. Uh, actually, also from the private sector, noticing that there is a, a certain move towards more city and and, and uh, public sector driven understanding of this uh, as rather being a, a, a tool to to gain these uh, uh, integrated, um, well, mobility outcomes, as, as you describe, as not traffic management, but transportation management, a holistic view to all of this. Uh, also for you, I have three questions. <laughs> and okay. I'm actually, I'd actually like to invite all the, uh, all the uh, spectators in, in the audience room, which we unfortunately can't see here. Um, uh, please join us in, in answering these questions uh, uh, and feel free to use the chat. So, Andy, in your perspective, what is the most important issue that needs to be overcome uh, to make mass sustainable and to, to actually develop it uh, into, into a proper service? Uh, so that alludes to the sort of last comment I made about sort of who has, who needs to sort of take ownership and control. Uh, and this is the balance between private sector and public agencies now. I think in the past, like I said, everything's been driven by the um, by private organizations that are often VC funded, you know, angel funded. Uh, they want to, they're quite happy to take on high risk for uh, quick rewards and getting market share. And that's been good. And, we, and we've had limited traction across the, the globe so far. Um, but now we're seeing cities, specifically after COVID, who, are, who have had their public transportation systems decimated and they're looking to right size their operations and they're looking to deliver their operations in a more cost effective manner. So I'm seeing more cities now embrace mobility as a service, as a methodology of augmenting the remaining public transportation network to deliver a better solution for its citizens. But at the same time, it's how do you manage the, the holistic transportation network in a region more than anything else? So I think to see mass grow in the future, uh, I'd like to see more cities standing up now and sort of saying, okay, let's deliver mobility as a service in the region, but we're gonna deliver it on our terms. Um, mm -hmm. we, want, we need a, a level of control uh, to regulate the private mobility service providers, but at the same time, we wanna dri drive uh, equitable reach of public transportation and private mobility transportation services to anybody that wants it within the city, not just the ones with credit cards and smartphones. All right, that actually answers a bit the, the second aspect of that question, who should be who should be in the lead of that development? Cities, um, cities, cities all the, the time. Yes, indeed. And then uh, the, the other question would really be, uh, and, and probably you answered that to, to some extent as well already, is really where's this mass discussion going wrong at the moment? Are we, are we missing certain aspects? Um, and are certain aspects actually hijacking the discussion that should be left out because they're not that important? Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I truly believe that um, over like the last five or six years, um, private mobility organized uh, companies such as like Uber, such as Mass Global, uh, such as UbiGo, such as Skedgo, <clears throat> they've done a fantastic job in promoting the discussion of mobility as a service. And like I said, cities and regions and public agencies, local governments are always risk averse and cash poor. So it's now taken uh, a, a sort of a, a big step to basically get them to sort of change direction. Um, and now it's a case of, I think we need to see private mobility service providers really realizing that the some of the commercial models that they've been sort of promoting as the, the key way of getting mobility as a service to work may not be the optimum way of doing it. And if they were to look at the way that they can deliver services in tandem with a public agency, we're going to see more acceptance of mobility as a service. Uh, so I, I think we do have, um, I think we do have a, a sort of a, a good uh, ecosystem building out. I think we just need to have very honest discussions about control and regulation of transportation services within a within a given environment. And that actually tr uh, translates back to a, to a theme that we've had in in all the uh, the answers from all the speakers. Actually, it's really this this moving away from the actual what and moving rather to the to the why so you had it on your screen as well really this policy outcome defining what we actually want to achieve with these services and these systems yeah. and then kind of push it over to the private sector um, 
to let them play into this goal and let them yeah. prove their case that they can actually contribute to it. Exactly. So with this, a public transport agency has a social requirement to deliver public transport to 100% of the population in a given region. And as, as soon as private mobility service providers realize that if they want to work in tandem with a public agency, they have to sort of match that sort of level of policy uh, and they have to sort of conform to what the public agency is doing. That's when we're going to see better traction and mobility as a service. All right. Uh, with these words, I'd like to actually invite back all the other speakers as well. Uh, if you could uh, start your cameras and, and join us on the screen. Um, and while that is happening, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, uh, well, I'd, I'd like to start the discussion actually, or, or keep the discussion as Andy has, had, has uh, introduced it in that way, uh, with really this question of, of, of the, the ownership of this. And I've been, I've been warned at this point <laughs> that we should uh, mute ourselves because we will have echoes otherwise. So if you could all do that, uh, then it's more pleasant for the audience. Um, so really staying at this ownership question and the, the public terms that Andy had introduced just now, what do you in, in your different capacities, some public, some private, actually make of these claims that some private sector stakeholders are currently making regarding that the organizations that are creating the vision for the services and creating the governance for the services should not actually be competing in the market with these services? What do you think of this? Is that, does that make sense? Is that a sensible uh, a claim or does that actually take uh, the big picture away that the public sector is already serving people in sustainable mobility modes and should be continuing to do so? Any thoughts on this? <laughs> is it too, too big of a question to start at that point, probably? Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I, I just feel it needs to be a cooperation. It's not one party who should take the lead. It's, it, it's, it's a joint effort to create something that's fully sustainable. If it comes from one side, it will not be equal enough, I think. Okay, I see a lot of nodding. So it is really, it is actually what, what, what I make of this is that the, the, private, the public sector parties also really recognize that there's a role for the private sector to play. They actually want to uh, have these services running in parallel to to reach more customers, to reach more segments, and to kind of not just create services that actually pamper the the users that are already using public transport, but rather enlarging that, getting a wider reach. Is that is that kind of behind the strategies that you're taking in Madrid and, and Paris, for example? Yeah, and uh, enlarging the, 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 the user base is crucial on the, on the sales channel and have a more coherent offer is something that we are always looking for. But the, 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 it is also uh, a, a way to see that we deliver a service. Uh, we our, our goal as a public company is to improve mobility for every citizen here in Madrid. Uh, the means of, of uh, to achieve that goal is something that are subject to change. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I, we we have started a, a smart bus trial with DRT uh, so so uh, service in Madrid. So so you can see uh, request a, a bus to to pick you up and, and get to a, a any any point within the region. Um, and and we have learned from that that, that sometimes you are delivered such a service because it's, it's, it's what we call the, the Roomba. You know, the iRobot issue uh, goes into the street. So it, it goes straight, going everywhere, everywhere to clean up the house. But when you have, when we have those Roomba-alike buses, they are bad service. It's a very poor service. You, you take a lot of time to wait for the bus and it takes really long time to, to get to the destination. So sometimes we have to make up our minds and see how are we going to achieve the best result for uh, the goals that we are built and we are built to improve mobility and sometimes adding more and more uh, low quality uh, public services is not the way to go. And I would um, add uh, the, the Paris Transport Authority, Ile-de-France Mobilité, 
charge of uh, of organizing financing uh, the the sustainable mobility and we see mass as a way to to do this so it makes perfect sense that we are the ones um pushing for it but also helping the the, the private sector um with the data that they would need or the, the services that they would need um especially because we have to organize mobility on a very large uh, scale as i mentioned earlier and sometimes mass can be seen as a as a, a tool for the happy few um, which is not something that we're trying to do because we have to organize it on a, on this large scale. So um, having the, the ability to do it as a public transport authority is is, uh, is a key for us to, to, to work. Okay, thank you. So a very hot topic, and there were also some questions uh, in the chat I've seen, is, is really the question of ticketing. So the, the ownership of ticketing systems the, the availability for ticketing for, for private sector parties to resell. Um, so there's been a, a couple of questions, uh, especially to, to uh, Ile de France. How are you organizing this, the availability of ticketing of your services, but also um, ensuring that, that private sector services can be ticketed throughout the ecosystem? And there was also the question to, to Andy to kind of see that from a technological perspective, who should be in the ownership of ticketing for mass? you could elaborate on that real quick. You want to go first? I can jump in. So I, th yeah. I think on the, on the ticketing side, um, from my perspective, uh, if, the, if, the if the public transportation agency within the city has got a, a good enough sort of ticketing system, uh, <coughs> you can connect it to a sort of a mass platform ecosystem, no problem whatsoever, and allow third party vendors to sell tickets on your behalf. And at the same time, if there's other people within the region that all have sort of different ticketing systems on their sort of vehicles, if you have a sort of common middleware system, uh, using the TOMP APIs, if we can, to sort of connect everything, it's a case of uh, th there's no reason why one person has to own all of the ticketing. It's about equitable account access and a sharing of account information. Um, and I say that from a Cubic perspective, I should say that Cubic should do all of the ticketing, but it's a case of no. It, it, Everybody's got to take a, an equitable role in this. Everybody's got to share. Everybody's got to understand their role and responsibility. So it, it's a distributed responsibility to provide ticketing and account services across a mass ecosystem. Aurélien or Olivier, could you elaborate a, a little bit on how you've organized that or how you're going to organize that because it's still in your time frame, as we saw from your presentation? Yes, and uh, as mentioned, the, the, the law passed in, in France um, allows for third parties to, to come and get uh, ticketing and to, to, to provide ticketing to, uh, to people. So we are uh, building the, the service to uh, allow those um, third party services to access ticketing. So this is something we're... Um, but also we, we have the, of course, the, uh, we, we provide the ticketing because we subsidize uh, many of the, of the public transports uh, in Ile de France. So this is, uh, that makes also sense that we are the ones providing ticketing. But uh, we, as mentioned, uh, are on the side of, uh, of the law as well like, uh, on this, uh, providing it to third parties that want to build uh, services, be, the, be it my, mass or just a, a single mode uh, platform. And do you think the access to ticketing uh, is actually one of the uh, uh, kind of a lever that we should be using as public sector to uh, um, to steer outcomes towards the right directions to actually ensure that services that do want to resell public transport ticket uh, tickets have to prove that they're working towards the right goals and are not just trying to well take in market share and, and then distribute uh, uh, journeys to to the modes where they can make most money, for example. Is, is that something that we should be exploring? Also looking at, at Andy uh, again, coming from the, the ticketing technology sphere. What, what do you think of this? It's um, it's important for us to we have uh, guidelines and it's mentioned in the in the reference guide that, that I mentioned um, for the people that um, sell those tickets that they do it in the in the way we we like at the same price and and etc. Um, but also what's interesting uh, is if because we keep the, the ticketing um, um, service, we can imagine uh, as we do, uh, for example, uh, it can be free for certain types of population, or we can group uh, modes and, and provide um, uh, attractive uh, offers on on, uh, on uh, different modes of transportation. Um, and I think the public transport authority is the, the right actor to, to do so, to promote, once again, uh, sustainable mobility.
Any, any additions to that from the other panelists? Yeah, I think, again, it, it's got to be equitable. It's like people have got to have equal access. But at the same time, I think you need an overarching managing authority that was, that's responsible for delivering on policy. Um, uh, and if the policy of a given city or region is to basically stop uh, single use ride sharing solutions coming into the central business district between the hours of seven and nine o'clock, they should be able to enforce that one. So it, it's a case of how, how are you going to sort of manage that from the network? If you want to promote more active modes of transport, such as uh, walking or bike share or uh, scooters or whatever, that, that could be a policy objective that can be implemented through a mass platform through equitable I sharing. Have a few bike sharing so. stations, <laughs> So that was the mass I'm actually talking with you, I, I figured. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Going on the bike share. Uh, any other additions to that from, from Madrid or from Berlin slash Flandern? Well, we, we really believe that this uh, uh, mobility as a service uh, can help in, in, in lowering and, and, and enhance the distribution of the, of the network. And that's why our occupancy feature is something that, which is very important for us. So we can, uh, let's say, move people for a, another part leg of the network, which is le less, uh, uh, less under stress or later. And we really believe that those kind of uh, information information driven uh, which uh, give uh, users the power to to really uh, go through the network uh, in a, uh, will help in the end because the peak is our problem uh, that, that's where you really stress uh, the traffic the congestion and the pollution uh, and, and, and in these COVID days even worse thing related to virus so we need more information and, 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 um, and we really uh, I, I really see the, the, the point of the common APIs uh, uh, like Tom uh, or the one we were presenting and we are studying and using some of them because we need to agree on common standard common integration it doesn't make any sense that if I integrate a, a, a new mobility operator in Madrid it is not really plugged into Paris or the other way Round. Otherwise, we are wasting a lot of money and investment and technology. So we need to get to agreement fast. And and for me, the regulation, uh, I have a fear uh, related to that. Now we don't have any way to handle um, uh, free riders. If you have a, a very tough free rider, you don't have really tools to 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 do that. And nobody is going to wait for the regulation. Uh, so, so we have to put that on the table because if you open all the tickets and you don't have any tool to stop free riders, you might be uh, in, in a very bad situation. So my claim is that we, in order to be uh, and to go for the public goals that we are looking for uh, and, uh, under a democratic structure, we need to get good agreements quick because we don't have much time left. Okay, so that would be, be the agreements on, on governing the, the access to the playground. I don't know who remembered it, uh, who, who actually mentioned it, but one of you came from, from the, the level playing field and the, the legal kind of bounded playing field into the equal playground, which I, which I really liked, this kind of analogy. Um, who, who's allowed to play on the playground? Is that, uh, is that uh, people that have kind of, or organizations that have kind of uh, presented that they can create uh, uh, mobility services or is, is a, a, a kind of a bright brain sitting somewhere in the garage somewhere in Europe um, allowed to access all the, the transport data and, and uh, set together a beautiful app? What is, what's the hurdles to actually enter this market? But I feel like the hurdles should be as small as possible that you don't only have the one party with a lot of capital creating something, taking it all. By opening the market and by creating something like, like a standardization, if you get that part out of the way, you can save so much time and effort in, uh, in, in going about legislation, about getting into the market, about promoting your product, about getting them into the sustainable possibilities. And I think that's the main thing. Once you, you get that, the weird technical part out of the way you have room to to improve the service itself 
and to, to level the playing field. But I would like to open it up as much as possible and see that happen. Do we have agreement on the panel with this? Uh... Yeah, I, I would like to, 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 to say something. I, I have been uh, watching on the chat and the, and the comments and lots of ownership issues are there and, and, and related to data, related to users. And, and I think if we are uh, thinking on this mobility as a service from product-based to service-based approach, in data, we should also go for uh, this kind of vision with access is more important than ownership and sharing and rules are more important uh, than fences or walls. And, and that's what we have to go for. Uh, and we have that in our principles for all the operators we integrate or in those platforms we integrate our public transport services. And so we can get to sharing agreements and access agreement. Uh, and and, and that, that's crucial. I, I, I think going for ownership goes to uh, some kind of Lord of the Rings approach wants to cover or, or to govern everyone. Uh, we need more horizontal approach. So not to create the, the eye of Sauron actually watching all over us. Uh, okay, so we, we're actually out of time already and we're five over uh, uh, half, half past three. Um, so with this, I would actually like to round off this, this session and I think uh, some people actually stayed with us through the entire time. That's lovely. We couldn't really see them, unfortunately. So it, it feels a bit as if we're having a private Zoom chat here uh, with, with, the, with the panel of us. But uh, I'd like to thank you all for your contributions. Um, I think we've noticed that the, the ball is actually in the corner of the public sector to create visions, to ensure um, and see mobility as a service, as a, as a tool for its policies and visions to be achieved, and to then engage with the public, uh, with the private sector to actually also, um, well, use all the brain capacity that we have to deliver on these goals and, um, well, create the, the kind of access conditions uh, to allow most players that, that want to go into the right direction to also be part of this movement. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much. Thank you also to Suzanne and Laura from Polis for putting this session together. And uh, with that, I wish you uh, a very happy evening and a good remainder of the Polis conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.